Thank you, Dr. Hart and Martha, for your great leadership here. And um, I just want you both to know, you have no worries about apologizing for the weather. So just don't go there with me. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, this is always a, a fun uh, couple of days for us, but I think this, this uh, particular conference, we've really worked hard to, uh, to broaden our, our presentation uh, content uh, and presenters to, to show you something a little bit different, and, uh, and I hope you'll, you'll feel that way by the end of tomorrow uh, after the conference concludes. Uh, it's a very impressive uh, group of uh, innovative thinkers, uh, and um, I, like, I hope you'll uh, agree that they're going to help us all think through about how we're going to uh, ignite the, the customer experience. But before we get uh, going, I want to ask you all a question here. Um, and that's how, are, how do you envision you're, gonna, you're going to uh, ignite the customer experience? I always s like to start off meetings by, and end meetings by saying, you know, a Peter Drucker line, don't tell me this was a great conference, this is a great meeting. Tell me what you're going to do differently beginning on Monday morning. What, 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 what's the takeaway value you have and what are you going to do differently to, to create a different result than you've had in the past? So think about different ways here uh, that you might uh, respond to, to this question. How are you going to ignite the customer experience? Consistency, just you know, keep doing the same thing, doing it, doing it better, but, but not confusing your, your customer. Uh, capital, investing differently, changing how you're going to invest in, in either technology or, or your store experience. Uh, the right product, always important to me. Um, and is that, is that how you're going to improve? Or are you going to have to change everything? You're just going to have to, you know what, I got I to gotta move out of where I've been and try a, a new uh, experience. Uh, uh, or is it, is it the customer uh, service aspect that, that must change? So um, uh, I, can I don't have to tell you to take out your smartphones because you obviously are on this subject. I mean, I think all those answers came from the students first. They're like sitting here, you know, they had like, six tweets and four video blogs already gone before I got on stage about the conference, but we'll, uh, we'll catch up. But let me, uh, we'll get back to this and, um, and see how you're, you're, uh, you're judging this, but I, I, I'm happy to see uh, customer service signing up uh, here because that can mean so many things, you know, how you interact with, uh, with your customer very specifically, and it can be done in so many ways. Um, but as we're getting going here, let me, I'll just give you a sort of a, a, a uh, a recap of what's happening with our own company, uh, just sort of set that, that stage. You know, we're now, you know, we've been coming back here for several years, um, but, but in the last four years, there's been a real transformation, and I think we started thinking about it back in, uh, in 07, 08, and 09. Um, but we're now the Macy's Inc., which is two brands, largely Macy's, 800, 800 Macy's stores, uh, and 37 Bloomingdale stores. Uh, we also have 13 Bloomingdale's outlets, which is new in the last few years. We started getting into that out outlet business for Bloomingdale's. Um, we we're the 10th largest internet company in America after Netflix. So we've obviously really pushed the, the envelope on that subject for a brick and mortar traditional retailer like ourselves. Um, and um, we had 172,000 uh, employees, uh, 171,000 in America and, and 1,000 uh, outside, outside. We have Ace, one, one store that I would say is truly international, and it's where Dr. Hart was referring to. I was in Dubai last week, uh, and we have a Bloomingdale store there that is now the second largest store in all of Bloomingdale's after New York City. So uh, I, I have an appetite for, for more. So, so we've got uh, uh, a, a lot of things going on, and, and, and then I'll talk to you about the business um, a little bit, results. Um, you know, we've had steady growth for the last last four years. In fact, we've picked up $4.4 billion basically on same-store sales in the last four years, and we're really proud of that. And it's because of these changes that we'll talk a bit about. Um, but last year was the toughest. We only picked up 2.8% uh, yet last, last year on same-store sales. That was the weakest of the last four. Uh, and yet, it, 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 we, you can see we, we, we actually picked up market share. We picked up more market share last year than we had in the prior three, and our increases were much higher in the prior three. So that's not good. 
uh, that, means we, that, that means we all have to change. We all have to be thinking about what's new and, and, and what's different because, because we have to respond very quickly to change the way the consumer is shopping in our industry for us all to succeed. All boats need to rise uh, in, our, in our industry. And in our case, I, the, the good news is, and I think this is true of more, uh, more retailers, is our earnings uh, have been in, in improving. So that's because I think many companies, many retail organizations have been focused on, uh, listen, if business is challenge, uh, challenging, I'm going to have to respond to our earnings uh, situation. That means SG&A, uh, that means productivity improvements, uh, that means investments of capital toward getting a better uh, return on invested capital, and all those things are, are happening. And, and certainly in our case, we've had uh, uh, fantastic growth in, in earnings for the last, last several years. Let me talk, now, so let me tell you about how we do it. It's in our case, I always talk about MOM. Uh, and, and MOM is, is the, the acronym for My Macy's, Omni Channel, Magic Selling. So just quickly, again, uh, you've heard it, most of you, but, but My Macy's is a very unique organization structure that we, we, we put in place in 2009 uh, that has uh, 60 cities around the country with about 20 individuals, former buyers, former planning executives, who are the local experts. They've supervised about 12 or 13 stores that they can drive to. They know the department manager, the selling manager. They know the top selling associates in those stores. They know the store manager. And they communicate what the customer is looking for in Tucson, Arizona, which is very different than what it is in New York City where those buyers live. Uh, and so yesterday I was in our stores and here and, um, and I was, I was looking at some, and I always ask, you know, what is, what is it about this store where customers walk into the Tucson Mall and say, this is my Macy's, you really get me. I'm the consumer, you, you understand who I am, this is my Macy's. And they walked me through different parts of uh, the apparel floor, and they walked me through, I think the, I the most obvious um, in answer to, that, to my question was in the textile floor, the home textile floor, where they had Southwest bedding that I'd never seen in any of our stores. And it's 40% of their sales of my entire, which is a huge business for us in, in, in uh, textiles, is coming out of these six beds that were, uh, that were very Southwest, very locally relevant to this, con to this consumer. And I love that, you know? I think we, we figured it out. We live in New York and trying to make these decisions and we figured out what the customer in Tucson, Arizona is looking for. That is, to me, the, the epitome of my Macy's and our localization strategy. That's the first step. Oh, omni-channel. This has been where we, we have invested literally hundreds of millions of dollars and completely changed the way that we are pushing capital, pushing marketing, pushing our spend and investments uh, for, toward our company. And, and uh, you, know, you know, we have some of the state-of-the-art fulfillment centers. I think Amazon and we are the only two in America that have this super high-speed, high-tech um, a delivery system inside of our, uh, the logistics capability inside of our fulfillment centers uh, th that is so fast and so unbelievable and so, so efficient. And, um, and when we're very proud of that. But that was then, and now we have uh, 650 of our stores able to ship you merchandise directly from a store to you, to, to you wherever you live and wherever you happen to be. That is huge, because that is, I talked about this last, uh, last year at this time, this whole issue of inventory optimization is gigantic for retailers like ours, where we have billions of, billions of dollars of inventory spread out on 800 stores. You and I will never get this 100% right. We'll never get this 100% right, because I'm in the fashion business. I'm not selling milk you know, and bread. I, I, I have to figure out what you're going to want next season and anticipate that and anticipate the size and the color and the weight of fabric and, and the tightness of the fit, you know, six months before I order it. So uh, by location. And so we'll, we're, gonna, we're, we're pretty good at it. We think we've got a lot of analytics that help us be good at this. We'll never be 100% right. And so when we're not, and you come in to a store in, in San Diego, California, and you're looking for something, and I don't have that size, color, item you're looking for, the system will find it. At the point of sale, the sales associate is armed with the information to do that. Very importantly, the new algorithm says, not only where is it, but where is it most efficient to, to send it from, including 
what is the store least likely to sell it at full price? And that is the beautiful thing because I, I, I'd rather pay for a higher shipping cost and ship it 3,000 miles and avoid a markdown, which is always more expensive for me. So, so t this whole investment in omni-channel uh, technology, systems, people is so big for us. Magic selling, you know, that in all of our stores, we just repeat this uh, over and over again because we just want to make it as simple for our team as possible. We want the customer to feel better having come in to, to Macy's and had an interaction than when he or she uh, had, before they had come into the store. Just as simple as that. Make them feel good. Do what it takes uh, to engage the relationship and solve problems for, for our customers and be helpful. And if they, it doesn't matter. If they, if they're, and I always say this, it's okay if they come in and they milk you for information and then they say, okay, I'm gonna go home and buy it online now. You know, that's okay because most of the time we're gonna get that sale. Not always, we'll miss some, but if we have the right engagement and relationship, we'll get it later. You know, so we, we're, just, we're just trying to have that mentality that it doesn't really matter where the sale occurs, it just matters that we make the sale. And, and over, time we, over time, if we have that attitude, we will. So um, that's, how we, that's what sort of brought us to here. And, but, you know, we are, I'll talk about the changes that we've made, but um, um, we're going to have to make more changes because the customer's changing. So just to kind of warm that up, watch this. Far is the next near, boring is the next weird, 80 is the next 20. The cloud is the next closet, butter is the next chocolate, Cupertino is the next Disney. Nice clones is the next. Hey, cute kids. Printing dresses is the next. Your order has shipped. And bacon is the next bacon. Middle school is the next midlife crisis. Implants are the next devices. Virtual reality is the next vacation. Glasses are the next phone. Clothes are the next phone. Hamsters are the next phone. Everything's the next phone. Sharing is the next caring. NYT. Fine is the next year, two bucks are the next three. Jet packs are the next backpacks. Saturn is the next moon, Alaska is the next candle. Minority is the next majority. The Macy's is the next. So I, I played that video. Um, yeah, it's fun. We have a big, we call it the big meeting. We have, we, uh, we, it's so big, we hold it at Madison Square Garden. And we have 10,000 of our employees live. Uh, and then we have another 15,000 around the country in movie theaters watching this live show. Uh, and 90 minute show, and, and it's about recognition of the great year. Here's all the people who helped. Here's the store of the year, people of the year. And then we get into where we're we going next. And this sort of teed us up for Congratulations, where are we gonna, what are we gonna change next? Because we have to keep, keep moving forward and thinking about uh, where we're going. Um, and we are indeed a company uh, that has embraced, uh, embraced change. When you think about, I think about, what has happened in the last seven or eight years, it is clearly, without question, significantly more than what happened in the 70 to 80 years uh, prior to that in our, in, in our company. Um, we bought the May Company. You know, we didn't really have department stores in the middle of the country. We were on the coast and some in Atlanta, here and there, Florida, but we really didn't have the middle of the country. May Company solved that for us so we could be a national uh, retailer, so we could advertise nationally, we could change the way that we market, go to market. Uh, that was a very big deal, but then we still had now 13 buying offices buying for regional department stores around the country and they had too many stores, and then we went for to eight, and then now they, they, each buyer was buying for 100 stores, and honestly, they didn't know the customer in three different states or four different states or five different states that they were buying for. We were, we were getting further away from the customer, I felt, and others of us felt. Uh, we went to four, we, we ultimately went to one buying office in New York City, but that, wasn't gonna, that was gonna be a very efficient model, because then we could have one buyer for Ralph Lauren, one buyer for Coach and Tommy and Mac Cosmetics, but, 
I wasn't getting us closer to the customer. So literally back of the napkin, we drew out, well, how do we do that? How do we recreate what it was like when I was a buyer and only had 20 stores? And I really did know my people. And that was when we invented this district teams that I described earlier in 60 cities. And that's been such a huge uh, deal for us uh, to execute. And, and we feel so good about that, that structure. Uh, and then, of course, we changed uh, a whole bunch of these regional department stores to the Macy's brand. We changed 400 department stores in one day uh, to the Macy's name. And we went literally from 200 to 400 to 800 uh, Macy's stores during this, this time frame. Uh, and at the same time, as I said, invested heavily into technology fulfillment and talent uh, to address the new changing uh, consumer. Um, but we just need to continue to embrace change. Uh, we've got to keep, uh, keep moving forward. Um, and, and as we do, um, you know, we think about, you know, what we have to do next. We have to organize ourselves, you know, to where the customer is going. And that means listening very, very closely. And I always say to our central organization, you know, when, when you get a call from Tucson, Arizona, and, and, and they're telling you that they want Southwest beds, just as an example, just give it, to, don't argue with them. Don't argue with them. You don't know. You don't know what they need in Tucson. Just give it to them. Just say yes. And I, and I constantly reinforce this point. And, and, I, and my belief is that they're not going to ask for anything that they're not going to be totally engaged with selling and totally on the hook for selling. And I tell the buyers, I said, look, if they're wrong, they're going to feel awful. They're going to feel much worse than you're going to feel about this little part of your business. Just give it to them. And by the way, if they're right, you're going to be successful. And so it, this, this is, I, I, it's taken us years to get to this point, but I think it's really made huge progress for us for this listening process from these, these district teams. And obviously with the, invent, you know, the, the reinvention of uh, technology and how to use technology and advanced analytics and using both our online system as well as using social media and digital uh, messaging, we're getting more and more information directly from consumers that's helping us with our decision making, making process. So we're listening better. I know we can do a lot better still, but we're, we've been listening better uh, than in the past. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, the, the, the customer's changing multiculturally. So how do we make sure we understand in this market the, the, the explosion of the Latino the consumer? How do, we, how do we get in front of, of, of this customer? How do we make sure that we understand the, the changing demographics in America and, 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 be, our, and get, be proactively re, uh, in, into those changes and those requirements? And then aggressively building our relationship uh, in our business with the millennial uh, consumer, all of the back row group back there, the University of Arizona students. Uh, you know, and, and you all know this, but if, if you're not totally focused on this, this 15 to you know, 33 year old you know, customer, then you're missing the boat. You're gonna, you're gonna totally miss the boat in the next 10 years because these will be the biggest consumers in America, and by the way, the world, uh, as well, because the same thing that's happening here is happening more so uh, around the world. Uh, so you have to understand who this, this young consumer is, what they want now, and then how do you engage them for the long term uh, to keep them attached to your, to your brand. And so any efforts that you're, you're making now um, is, re is required for you to, I think, capture them for, for the long time. And we've been lucky uh, in, in grasping this idea, uh, and we've, we've pushed very, very hard uh, to make sure that, that we're connecting. So, uh, and I can give you, you know, 4.2 billion other reasons why you should focus on the uh, millennial, millennial consumer. Um, but uh, in, in our case, we do it through product first because you can have the greatest experience, you know, you can have the wonderful, wonderful environment, you know, all, you know, techn technologically exciting for them. Uh, Entertainment-wise, etc. But if you don't have the right product, it, it doesn't matter. In our case, you have to have the right product that connects. We launched 14 new brands aimed at the millennial consumer last year. Not all of them worked, but some of them worked really, really well. Uh, and the good news was we picked up market share with this young millennial co consumer uh, fairly aggressively this past year, which we were very happy about. And that's been a tough business for that's been a tough customer for us to get because they've been shopping clearly online, but they've also been shopping the specialty stores for the last five or six years, uh, and you're starting to see some of that change, and, and uh, we fortunately were able to pick up some of that business with a real concentration on this, this millennial consumer. Um, and we've also figured out that this, 
we're not the best at you know, every category uh, that, that we sell. And it's okay to admit that and to engage someone who is and bring them under our umbrella. So my hardest, biggest defeat for me was Sunglass Hut, you know, because this is a very, sunglasses are a very profitable business, very good business. And so we're selling sunglasses, of course, doing a pretty nice job. And then we say we had finally agreed to Sunglass Hut to test it and, uh, and let them take over our sunglass business. And we did it in our Florida stores, right? Pretty much think, well, that's fine. We're pretty good in Florida. We know, you know, it's sunny there. And so these guys came in and literally doubled our volume overnight in sunglasses in every one of our stores. And they did it more profitably. And I'm, I'm like, what is wrong with us? Why, why is that possible? Well, this is all they do. I mean, they fly in inventory. They've got Prada. They've got Gucci. They've got Dolce & Gabbana, brands that I couldn't get directly in the past, so they had a better assortment. They're loading stuff in, flying it in. They're staffing the depart every single one of the departments with the person because they can afford the high-margin business that they, they can afford to staff it. They just did it better than we did. So we have now, I, I said, I'm over it, roll it out. It's in every one of our stores. It's doing incredibly well. Big defeat for me personally. Uh, so then comes uh, the athletic footwear business. We were terrible in the athletic footwear business. And you know, we kept calling and, and, uh, and Gene Jackson is a good friend of mine, here, is here, I'm gonna speak, to, speak with us from Nike. I could never get the best Nike shoes. And I even, and Gene's a friend of mine, I still couldn't get the best Nike shoes. And so uh, they all went to finish line and they all went to Foot Locker. I'm over it. We've got finish line in our stores, rolled it out, 600 stores. I'm doing four times the footwear business that I was doing when I had the business, you know? And so it's ridiculous. So uh, we just brought in Lids. Lids is, uh, these are the guys, and these, and these guys, by the way, if you have University of Arizona, these are the guys that make the U of A Wildcat product, okay? They're, they're the guy that make the Duke product. They're the guy that make the, uh, the, the, the Chicago Bulls and the, and, the, and the Brooklyn Nets product. So these guys are really, really good at all the licensed product. And we brought them in, and we weren't even in, bar we were barely in this business now. We're, we did $5 million in one store before the Super Bowl on, on uh, Seattle Seahawks and Denver Bron Broncos product. I mean, it was like unbelievable the transformation that we did with uh, this when we, when we brought them in. We're rolling them out. So, so uh, we've learned, and by the way, most of these businesses that I've just spoken to go after the millennial consumer. You know, the athletic apparel, the, the, the team sports uh, product and all of this is going right at the heart of this, this millennial consumer, and that's clearly helped us. Uh, so, Technology is another big push for us. Uh, that is a major priority. And I think technology, you know, we've been, I think, good at the technology side with our online business, but now get the technology in the store. You know, make sure our associates can, can, can use pads to, to, or tablets to, to figure out what, you know, how to show a broader assortment than what we have in the case. Make it easier, find it. Uh, and, you know, kiosks to show, we can't have, you know, a full handbag assortment in every department, but, or every store, but why not have a kiosk to show the broader assortment and just order from the kiosk in some of our smaller stores that can't. So we're doing that, uh, doing that now. Um, why not use technology to, to, for our point of sale devices to train our associates and actually in their downtime, they can go to the point of sale device and they can actually learn the, the selling benefits of a Michael Kors uh, watch or a Michael Kors uh, shoe and, and see that, you know. So, you know, using technology and embracing it and bringing it into the store is such a critical piece of what we're trying to do here. Uh, and then, of course, I think we talk, talk about my Macy's, but really the next is me personally, you know, how, get to me, don't tell me what, what you want in Tucson, Arizona, tell, what, tell you what one individual customer wants in Tucson, Arizona. And so how do I communicate with you? How do I anticipate your individual needs and, and, and message you directly on your mobile device so I'm not wasting your time, I'm not cluttering you with, with stuff you don't want to know or hear about, but I'm very relevant to you. And, and, We'll get better and better uh, at that, and, and I think that's where we're all, we're all headed. We were, you know, we're doing all these things, and I'm very proud of our company. We were recognized by, uh, we were recognized by Fast Company as one of the 
10 most innovative uh, retailers in the, in the world just last, last month, and we were very proud about that. But, but there's so much more that we have to do to stay on top of this. 85% of our customers um, are, are, are using smartphones today, so the opportunity to take advantage of what you know, they're, they're doing and, and using inside our stores is, is, is great. Uh, raise your hand if, if you, uh, I asked this, at, at, I was out teaching on, or speaking on campus yesterday and I asked this question. Um, I got one answer, it'd be interesting to see what yours is. Raise your hand if you sleep with your cell phone. Okay, so still about 80%. <laughs> so it was 100% yesterday, so. Uh, but uh, you know, it's, this is not going anywhere. I was in a home of a woman um, I'm on the board of Procter and Gamble, and we went to when I was in Dubai after I finished seeing my stores. I, I went to a home of a woman on a research project, and we sat there and listened to her being interviewed about how she shops and why she does she like Tide, does she like you know Pampers and all these different things. And uh, and it was fascinating to me because one of the things she said, she said she's got her baby with her while she's talking, three month old, and she said, you know, sometimes I leave my baby with my with my housekeeper or with my. Uh, with my sister, but I never leave my cell phone. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is in Dubai, you know, so my goodness, you know, how do we take advantage of, uh, of, of, of this? Uh, because this is the new shopping buddy, you know? This is, your, this is how you're, you're navigating uh, where you're gonna shop. You're navigating, in some cases, we have about five of our stores with the iBeacon uh, technology, so you can navigate your way where you are located in the store and where you're looking for the product. Um, we can message you when you're standing in front of, a, of a, uh, the handbag department too long and you haven't purchased, and we can message you and say, hey, I got an idea. Buy that Michael Kors bag. Uh, and comparing, you know, you're comparing prices. All, it's, it's just your shopping buddy. And, and so we have to figure out how to make it, uh, the, the mobile device, more simple for you. And what we all know is that, is that it's all going to video. At least, and I don't know what it'll be five years from now, but I know, I know now, it's all going to video, and so everything on your phone, uh, you're gonna you're gonna demand this. And we talked to the students about this yesterday. You know that this, this, you're gonna be just expecting to be standing in front of Bobby Brown, who will be here tomorrow in the cosmetics department, and 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 and, and you push you know your your cell phone or you'll wave it, and all of a sudden you'll have Bobby speaking to you about how to you know, apply a concealer or how, you know, what's the right makeup for you. And that's going to happen. And that's be happening slowly now. It's going to come in a fast wave for almost everything I think we do in a very short period of time. So making sure that you are ready to embrace the bandwidth that's, that's going to require um, if, and, and understand how to get in front of this technology that's heading toward you. Um, and I know that the heads of I know that the head of AT&T and the head of Verizon and the head of other of these technology companies are all moving that direction. So it's gonna, it's it's coming. And so, you know, what, this I talked about the ship, the inventory optimization, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, about that. But the next thing now for us, we tested, we tested BOPS, uh, buy online, pick up in store. And honestly, I said I, I didn't actually think this was going to be such a big idea for us. Um, I was a little bit resistant. I think I, I, I was written about this. My daughter reminded me. My, I have a daughter, and she said, "Dad, you are so uncool. Like that guy, I can do that with so many stores. I can't do it with your store. What's wrong with you?" And so I, I, and I, and I so I called up my head of stores. I said, "Peter, you are so uncool. I can't, <laughs> can't believe you don't do this." And uh, and so we now have it. And uh, we tested it in Washington, D.C. It was a home run, huge success. And lots of people like to shop that way. They, wanna, they actually wanna, they want the efficiency of knowing that when I go to the store, I know where I'm going to find the item. They got my size, and I'm going to run in and pick it up. I mean, 100% of the time, not 100, but a large percent of the time, they pick that up, and they pick up something else. And so the radiated sales have been just fantastic with this uh, buy online, pick up in store. So of course, it's rolling out to the rest of the, the country this, this year uh, right now. And I think that the way that does give us a great advantage, all of us who have both brick and mortar and, and an online business versus just the pure play online uh, businesses. Uh, because the reality is, and we're, you know, we're one of the biggest customer research companies uh, in America, uh, is that consumers still prefer, particularly women, if I can say that, but it's true, 
to touch the product. They'll, they want to look at it on your phone. They want to think about where they're going to shop, but then they want to come in and touch the fabric. They want to try on the jacket, try on the shoe. Uh, they want to go with their friend. They want, they want that interaction. They want Bobby Brown or somebody at her counter to show you how to apply the makeup because it's better than trying to read a box and do it yourself. So, or read it online. So, opportunity to take advantage of that. Um, and everybody, you know, is communicating in every single possible way, tweeting, sending photos, posting photos, you know, experiencing, uh, Video bloggers, vloggers, you know, uh, we, we just created a new show just last week, uh, called, uh, called Market, uh, Market Studios, which is a, which is, uh, it's all only online and it is, it is a competition every week of two stylists or would-be stylists. They're all millennials, all the candidates that, that are, that are competing. And we set, we did the first contest and we said, okay, here's a shoe. This is a great, beautiful, you know, uh, cage shoe. Uh, now, you dress the, the, the person from uh, the ankles up. What would you uh, put with this particular shoe? It had a contest. You got 10 minutes. Go through Macy's store and figure out this. And it was just fantastic uh, to, to, to watch and to see how this all uh, evolves. And, you're, you know, the whole idea is you're trying to engage an audience, you know, to, that are, that are like-minded, interested in fashion, you know, to be engaged with your with your brand, and and so uh, and we you know we got a nice competition going among uh, among lots of people to uh, to accomplish this. So, you know, we're 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 deeply involved in the in the in the social media, of course, in the in the digital space. Our marketing spend has dramatically changed from uh, print, what it was just a couple of years ago, to what it is today, um, on digital, and and uh, and again, it's gonna it's gonna become more so as we as as we as we move forward, and uh, we remain committed to uh, driving growth and continuous improvement. That is our motto. We keep talking about, you know, you can't stand still. You got to keep moving forward. Um, localization, omni-channel, integration are key components of our, our vision and our strategy. Uh, we're going to stay very focused on the mom strategy, as I've, as I've described, but there's always ways to tweak it, improve it, uh, and make it better. And so that is a snapshot of what we have been up to. It's a very fast paced, uh, energized uh, company that, that I belong to. I'm lucky to work with a very talented group of people who challenge me every day about thinking uh, forward uh, and making sure our brand stays relevant with today's and tomorrow's consumer. So with that, I thank you very much for listening. Thanks. And I think we have uh, a couple of minutes for some questions. So if you have them, raise your hand. It's hard for me to see up here. So uh, if there's microphones running around, you just grab them and raise your hand. They'll get you a microphone and we'll um, let, you, let you ask the question and we'll do our best to respond. Anybody? I see, I see questions in the back out there. I see questions over here. So just make sure the microphones get to them. And again, I can't see you, so uh, start talking. Terry, uh, one of the things that I'm, I think all of us that have brick and mortar stores and, and omni-channel, you know, basically are concerned about is how do you evaluate cannibalization of your brick and mortar retail stores versus the versus the advantages that you're picking up in e-commerce? Yeah, and now listen, this is a big and important uh, question for for all of us. But I start with this. I start with saying. What does the customer want? If I, if I want to ask the customer first, and I, and I have a sign on, outside my door, Dr. Hart mentioned, that says my name and one title, Chief Customer Officer, and I really try to put myself in that position of what, does it, what would the customer say about this decision? And we may not always be able to respond favorably, but I always start there. And I make, like she might say, I want free merchandise, so as an example, and I can't do that. But... Uh, but but there but most of the time I'll, I'll start I'll start there. So I know she she wants the choice. So she wa you know so whether I'm gonna I'm gonna block her from uh, the choice that'd be a bad bad mistake. So she wants the choice. So then it becomes up to me to figure out how to make money with the way that she is uh, she is purchasing. And I have the experience that you're describing. I know I do. I have customers that come in. You know, they start on their phone, they come into the store, they talk to the sales associate, and then they, they leave. And they'll be right in front of them, by the way, 
you know, showrooming, if you will, to, to look for other products. The way that we um, uh, worked through that process is, is 46% of what we sold last year at Macy's was either exclusively ours or a very limited distribution. And I, and I would just encourage you, as many, many as you as I can, I'm doing it at Bloomingdale's too. I only have 37 stores at Bloomingdale's, but we've gone overseas and found these great fashion brands, apparel brands that we, we have exclusively there. So we're doing the same thing now at Bloomingdale's. And I would just encourage you to find product that is yours. Product that it can't, you know, because, because ultimately there's going to be customers that are going to shop you for identical price. And who wouldn't want a lower price, right? Um, unless, you can give a unique service, a unique experience uh, that differentiates you and your brand from others. And that's the other, I think, solution. I'll let the, I'll let the microphones go and you, whoever's got the microphone. Uh, Terry, last year you asked of the poll, uh, what's, going to be, what's going to transform retail in the forthcoming year? And one of the choices was omnichannel. One of the choices was inventory optimization. Omnichannel won, but you called it inventory optimization. So I'm curious what you, uh, how you would have voted this year. Yeah, that's, I, I still am pulling for, I'm pulling for inventory optimization because I'm a guy with about $7 billion of inventory laying around at any given time. And so I'm, I, I am passionate about making sure that we find ways to improve our performance, as I describe, of finding that right inventory in the right, right location. I mean, I'm, I'm in deep on omni-channel, I think, as you, as you, you have seen. Uh, we're making progress on inventory optimization. I think when that breakthrough does come, it's huge. I mean, it, whenever I'm able to improve my inventory velocity turnover, my gross margin goes up 100% of the time. And when that happens, obviously, I, you know, I'm, I'm making more money. So, so I, I am all in on inventory optimization. I, I can tell you that we didn't make as much actual progress on the bottom line results-wise as I would hope. So that's my, I'm focused on it again this year. It's a good question. And a great memory, by the way. <laughs> Terry? Yes. Well, uh, to the last question, uh, I'll quote you about 10 years ago. You told me, inventory's my enemy, receipts are my friend. So I, I like yes. that. I've borrowed that line a number of times. My question is about- meaning, Inventory meaning the stuff that's just out there, but correct. I like to sell the stuff that's coming in and have it go out just as fast as it comes in. Newness drives business. My question's about the millennial customer. You talked about the importance of capturing this customer. What are the cornerstones of your strategy to drive that customer into the stores? First and foremost, Paul, is the, it's, it's the product. And I think we didn't have it. I just think, you know, we had nice product that was aimed at young consumers, but we just didn't have a full array and a full assortment of product for this, particularly this 15 to 20, 21, 22 year old to, to shop with us. We're actually quite good. When you graduate from college, you guys in the back row, you're going to come to us because you don't have a lot of the clothes that you're going to need. I mean, you do because your guys are studying fashion and you look great, but most of your friends don't. Uh, I was on campus and I saw some of that. And so, <laughs> so by the way, it's okay. That's what I looked like when I was 20. Uh, but, but you will, you, but we'll get you, we'll get, because we have the, the clothes that you'll, you'll want for your job interviews and for, and for your work. But, but, be, but now that, you know, focusing on this young consumer while you're in, still in college and, and in high school, um, that's about, that's about getting the product right. And as I said, we launched 14 brands, uh, this past year. We added this whole major emphasis on, on athletic apparel, which was a big part of, uh, a part of this wardrobe. Boys, young men, young women. Uh, and so that is the number one, the number one thing. I think we're pretty good at, uh, getting closer to the, where this, uh, young consumer is getting their information on their, what, what, what social networks they they prefer. Uh, and then how to communicate with them. I think we're pretty good. We can always get better, and we will. Uh, but it, for us, it was a big move uh, with product. Uh, Martha, how am I doing on time? Okay. Here's one over here I see, and then, and then I heard a voice back over here. So over here. Yes. Terry, can you tell us a little bit about why you took the title of Chief Customer Officer? And it suggests organizational alignment issues. And I have a second question from my friend over here next to me. Uh, what is the future of mall-based stores in, in all the changing customer traffic patterns? 
in, in modeling stores? Mall-based stores. Mall-based stores. Oh, mall-based stores. Okay. Uh, first, chief customer officer. Um, the, the, the reason why I think this is so important is because we are, you know, we're sitting in New York with my direct reports and, and we're making decisions for our 30 plus million dollar charge card customers around, around the country. Basically, one in three households shopped at, at, at Macy's last year. You know, so so we, uh, we, we, have, we have this huge, huge net that, that we cast. And so, you know, who's standing up for the customer? I mean, who's, who's really thinking about some of the decisions we're making, especially when it's efficiency? And, you know, we ha I, want a f I want people to drive efficiency. I want us to, to be a more successful, higher return, you know, out business. I want us to be a, a great company for investors. And, and how do we make sure we're driving those efficiencies? But at the same time, you know, who's saying, wait a minute, you know, the customer's not going to like that. You know, and, and, and so how are we going to get, who's going to get in the middle of that conversation? And, and I try to make that, that person me. So, so uh, that's, I mean, I, so I, I think it had to start there. I, I, I had to start with that, that strong point of view and message to my broad organization that that was the case. And, and, and backing up what I'm saying, I get about, I think about, I guess about 50 uh, messages today, either, and most of them are emails. They're still coming in emails because I don't give out my cell phone. But, uh, but, the, but I get at least 50 a day direct communications from customers. And, and 45 of them are because they have a problem. You know, and I want to know. And then people say, why, do you, why are you so accessible? I want to know. Because, I, I mean, I want to actually do something about it. And it takes me n no time at all. Because I, I don't respond to all of them. I just send it to guys and gals that will respond to it, you know. And so, and, and when I do, they get it. They get it. This is important to me. And I have time to follow up in, on a customer uh, complaint. It's usually you turn down my credit or the furniture delivery, some of the complicated things. Uh, but we got we to gotta fix it. And, and, I, and, and when we do... It, it, the customer is almost always better than the, in terms of engaging with us than they were before the problem occurred. And then the second question is the, is the mall-based stores, and it's a very, very good, good question. Um, and I just want you to know that this is something on my mind, and it's something on the, mall, on the mind of the, the, the mall developers. I'm hosting a meeting in about three weeks with all the, the, the developers and several retailers. And we're gonna talk about this very subject. How do we engage in the, in, in, with each other and, and, and work together? Because we want the same thing. We, we, want, we want a lively entertainment-based you know, experience when you come to the shopping mall. Some shopping mall, by the way, I've got 100 malls where I have no problem because they're just phenomenal and they're you know, driving traffic through. But I got several hundred others that need this new experience and so, I don't have the answers, but I know it's on the minds of, the sh of me and other retailers and on the shopping mall developers. I think I'm out of time, uh, so thanks everybody for, for listening. Enjoy the conference.